There are a few essential things our bodies need to boost our immune system and stay healthy, especially in a colder season. Me and my family use Z-Stack, Z-Detox, and Z-Flu developed by the great Dr. Zelenko, who has a place in history for his tremendous life's work. With every purchase of Z-Stack or any other of Dr. Zelenko's products, you also support the Zelenko Freedom Foundation in their tireless work to bring back medical truth and freedom to everyone. To save on your Z-Stack order today, use coupon code INSPIRED. Please find the link to order down below. Hey, hey, Inspired Tribe, my fellow freedom lovers, it's John Nolan here. Thank you so much for tuning in to another Inspired Conversation. And uh, this has become a classic, something I always look forward to, to have him back on, my soul brother, great friend, uh, filmmaker, researcher, and a fellow light worker and freedom fighter, Frank Jacob. Thank you so much for joining us again today. Nice to be here, John. Thanks for having me back one more time. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's one more time, but it's definitely not the last time, Frank. Uh, our conversations have, have reached and inspired, hopefully, millions of people so far, and we intend to continue to do that because you and I and all of us, we're on a mission, and that's not just to throw out content at people. We're actually on a very specific mission, and I just said it off camera there's an energy window building, a positive energy window building. And that positive energy window comes from first discerning, realizing what is truth and what are lies, and then realizing what is it that we actually want. And we, you and I, we're always on this discernment journey and the paths get narrower and narrower because the events are accelerating on both sides of the spectrum. Um, and you came on and you said, there's so much happening in the EU. There's so much happening at G20. Um, they're, they're just going bad shit, right? So what is it that you've discovered uh, since we last spoke? And what is it kind of that's really permeated your perception? Well, I mean, what I've been noticing is that a lot of really cool information is coming out. Like, for example, I mean, what you would think is the kind of information that causes landslides to take place in the alternative community. Like, let's just take, for example, that Fauci documentary, right? And it's been out there now for probably almost a month now. And, you know, Fauci's still a free man, you know, and uh, these people are still moving around as movers and shakers do unimpeded. And I'm noticing there's this kind of thing going on in society right now in the political scene where people are on the one hand thinking that, you know, we're moving into the fifth dimension and everything's getting great. There's only one timeline, you know. And on the other hand, you've got these. Um, powerful, powerful people, and not because they're powerful in and of themselves, but because we've given them that power over the course of the last decades, and they're now riding high at their caviar dinners, at their big meetings, at the G20 meeting right now, for example, and they're um, they're just gaslighting us. It's like they're telling us, you know, like black is white, you know, and it's not the other way around. And people that are normies that are used to having their normal world that want to believe in their old normal world you know when they loosened up on the lockdowns and stuff they're buying their gaslighting you know the, the normal people who don't want to wake up are just buying it <laughs> and the people who are awakening and there's more and more of them are facing this stonewalling uh and you know so you've got this it's like the intensification on on both sides of the of this timeline issue if you want to put it that way right that's that's what i'm noticing and you know we've got um you know klausy boy over here uh or actually not here what am i saying he's where they're in bali <laughs> they're over in bali wait did he <clears throat> did he go there by sailboat klaus did he um, go there by sailboat or did he use his private jet to go there I would imagine he he probably took his private jet because he's so busy he doesn't have time to sail. Are you kidding? These people didn't all the to... didn't all the important people that are talking about climate change and man made climate change and see did they didn't they all fly their jets over there? I'm just well yeah. they, they didn't go there that was somewhere else. This is you're mixing eggs and apples here, right? Um, yes, that climate conference I think it was in Saudi Arabia or oh, something. Oh yes, yes, yes. Right? Sorry, sorry, you're right. That, they right. all. Flew. They all flew in their big yeah, fat yeah. jets, right? And probably left their, you know, their 37 staff in their four houses and without anybody in them except, you know, their servant staff running at full power with the air conditioning running and all the freezers and the steaks and the freezers keeping them, you know, ready for when they return in their jets. Yes, but now they're in Bali. They're on to Bali, 
right? And then so, you know, that you have Klaus Schwab in Bali talking at the G20 summit. The G20 is like the the G is like the the 20, you know, biggest yeah. government, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? The Western governments. So you've got a man who is an unelected official running a private think tank out of I think Switzerland, right? If I'm not if I'm not mistaken, that's still their headquarters. The party showing, of Davos. Up at the, showing up at the G20 and telling people, yo, we must do this and we must do that, and the new world must look like that, you know. And I'm asking myself, what the hell business does this man have dictating? you know, anything to anybody as far as where we're going in the world. It's none of his business. That's kind of, you know, they're selling us on this idea of democracy. But isn't that our job to kind of tell the government where to go and what we want? Right? And it's but like they just kind of the slid into the industrial place, right? revolution, Frank. Yes. We must I'm put chips you. in the brain of everyone. And we are Here, penetrating check. all the cabinets of the world. Here. <laughs> I'll play a stupid clip, right? It's like the sharp difference which we see in the fourth industrial revolution is the fact that the winners take it on. Contrary to the previous industrial revolutions, it's very difficult to copy. So if you are first mover, you are the winners. And this will determine global competition on a national, but also on the on a business level to a large extent, and I hope in a not too hostile way in the coming years. You know, so there you have it. He's saying the winner takes all, right? What he's talking about there in this, the, the fourth revolution, yeah? He's talking about their transhumanist agenda, and they know that the people who are embracing technology and who are going to be the first ones to embrace technology are going to win the game. In their mind, that's because, you know, the people with the most toys at the end win the game. That's their philosophy. They're materialists. Let's not forget, you know, the ultimate, the foundation of what we always have to remember is that what we're talking about here is the, the paradigm between the ultimate and materialism, which is what the transhumanists represent, and the idea that we are very, very powerful creator beings and that there is uh, such a thing as a creator that the universe had a divine plan, that there was actually everything has a divine order, that it just didn't happen by accident. You know, and so this is these are the two factions that are moving right now. And and I think that the commitment on the part of the people who are in this sort of spiritual side, I mean, it's there. But but there's kind of like there's a little bit of denial, like there's a little bit of, you know, denial, just how intense this this current battle is, how fast it's moving. Right. I think, Frank, what you're saying is they are highly organized and they have been organized. This artificial um, anti-human agenda, transhumanist agenda is highly organized. It It's moving very, very structured in a, in a clear pattern forward. They have the funding. They have the personnel. They, they they set it up right, like they set it up very, very um, perfectly, if you will, for their cause versus we are a conglomerate of free spirits that are not quite realizing what we're up against yet. And as such, if we were to unite, if and it's, it's what I literally called for in my previous video, if we were to unite, realize it doesn't matter if you're a Jew, it doesn't matter if you're gay, it doesn't matter if you uh or a, a, a fruitarian or if you're a carnivore it doesn't matter in this big picture here because it's against all of us it's against yes. the the principle of hum of, of what it means to be human that's what it's against so we need to unite and finally realize that this is the common thread this is one common thread every breathing red bleeding human being faces on this earth today and that's the end of us and I think in that, we need to become better. Even you and I, we need to become better at bringing people together and realizing we need to unite and eliminate this thread so we can finally realize who we really are and why we really came here. Otherwise, we won't have the chance to do that. Well, that's the part that that um, is, for me, the most upsetting, John, right? Because it's like, you know, the windows of time is getting so narrow that in a sense, what we're looking at here is a period of time for 
really how is the whole world going to unite it's like it's us the majority against a very very small minority of people and you know the 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 uh you know the guy they call america's most smartest man i think his name is christopher langan he published some papers about it recently and he was he's actually up on this issue now too and he put it in one of his recent papers of course it, i had to read it three times because the guy is like so hyper uber intellectual that you know you have to read what did he say what did he say and you know what what he's saying in the in the end is he's saying exactly what we're saying it's like it comes down to this materialist faction versus this idea that there has to be kind of um a common set of like it has to spread over all of humanity this kind of awareness uh so that there's this autonomous rising together and you know you know i've talked about a lot about how we have help from the cosmos and we talked about that in some of our earlier shows that the cosmos is really helping us right um you know we've got all these factors that are designed somehow amazingly to correspond with internal body parts like organs brain parts of our brain the, the fact that our that our brain is an interferometer you know and that we have the, we've got all this but nobody's reinforcing that it's only why is it it's only the fringe people like us but the mainstream are ignoring that part completely they're all about materialism they just see it as hey you know sustainable right so they make you know they make um artificial foods fake meats right they don't think about the bovi count in that meat, which is no longer there. It's toxic, right? They don't think about that. They just say, looks like meat, tastes like meat, and has, you know, vitamins B, A, blah, 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 inserted. Your body should understand it because they're they're basically out of touch with that whole aspect. And, you know, the, the, th the same way that these people are out of touch, they're also out of the political scene is out of touch with the needs of their people. So you're having this escalation and I'm noticing it a lot in Europe, of course, because I'm in Europe, but, but I'm seeing it in the States too, this disconnect. The politicians are ramming through policies, and in the States it's called executive orders, and we're going to get to that later. Um, I want to talk about a little bit what's going on that I found in the States. Uh, but in, over here, they're pushing through things that are contra-natural. In the, in, in the case of, for example, there's um, there's this politician in Germany that's pitching limiting the amount of cash that we are able to use which is you know that's the first and foremost way of of an of guaranteeing anonymity which is our right to be anonymous where we buy what we buy nobody should know that except for us and so by putting a cap on how much we can use the next level is there's a cap on how much is in circulation and they tighten the circulation of the cash. And that leads to the second article in the middle, which this, you know, the German finance minister, Lindner, this guy's a total psychopath, right? He's like, he's burning at the chomping as the, at the bit, like they say, trying to basically get um, the, their, he try to keep something called cash, digital cash. He calls it digital cash. Like it's like uh, that's an oxymoron if there's ever been one. People, yeah. People, Put, and, and please the emphasize thing. the moron part in this in the oxymoron. Let's emphasize right. the moron part. Right. It's an oxymoron, and the people who believe that there's such a thing as digital cash, well, then they deserve what's coming to them because essentially it's like saying, "Hey, you know, it's like cash, but it's digital." Uh, mm -hmm. no. It's it's like that. If you believe that, really, I'm sorry. Well, it's you, like it's like going to right? a it's like going to a tanning studio and thinking you're you're looking at the sun. I mean, you're not looking at the sun. You're looking at an artificial light bulb. It's not the sun. It doesn't give you what the sun gives you. It's it's not even close to remote. You know, well, right. I'm, a, I'm at a loss for words. You can't, take, you can't take the sun away though. That's the only difference in that that analogy that doesn't because in the cash they can take the cash away and in the end, as we see, you'll be left in a society where there's no longer any cash. Then you have to use their you know, and we went into that whole thing with that CSRQ, which is all still very much on the radar. That's like we can't deny that that's going on, you know. And the third part, which I wanted to talk about, which is well, not the only thing, but the the economic political thing I wanted to mention is that they're basically they've just passed a law in the EU, even though it's an unelected body. Let's be clear about that. But somehow they've the countries because they've given up their sovereignty have allowed this private body influenced by the Schwabsters uh, to actually make policy, then that has to be 
adhered to and obeyed by the individual nation states. So the last piece of it is they're moving away from carbon combustion engines so that by 2033, you will not be able to buy a, a new car that's carbon combustible engine, and you'll have to use an electric car, which means what? It means you're going to be on the electric grid. And if the electric grid falls out, guess what? You ain't going anywhere, dude. And, you know, it's funny. We're already talking about blackouts and they're worried about the freezing and stuff because of a lack of electricity. And, and Frank, let's reverse engineer this just a little bit because um, you and I, we're not really fans of producing, you know, a hundred more years worth of cars that are going to produce fumes and 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 uh, really harm Earth. That's not what we're about. What we're saying is, if you do just this much research, you will realize that all governments of the world have classified and hidden patents and hidden technologies that would have allowed us to run cars on water, to run cars on all kinds of things, and to actually run transportation independently, um, and without any oversight, without having to have a meter on it. And we could have had we could have done that decades ago. We had the technology, yeah. and they're classifying it as national security threats, and that's why they're hiding these patents and killing these inventors, or making them disappear, or or buying them off. One of the three options. So what we're saying is, no, we're not against moving to a different technology whatsoever. We're just saying right now you have Pepsi and Coke with the, the we're right now. The, the bad option of burning gas is still much better than electricity because these cars will be 100% and already are controllable. It will go to auto autonomous driving, with the, which means you won't drive the car. It will drive you and it will decide where you can and cannot go and whether you can go at all. And, and that's really what we're talking about here, the loss of freedom. Well, so, right. so you reverse engineer that you lose freedom over how you spend your money because you don't have cash in hand. And then you lose freedom over how you move around because you don't have the opportunity. And boom, you're trapped in your little bubble and you have to do what that's their that's what they're offering us here. And they're offering it, it and, and they're decreasing our quality of life by making everything so damn expensive and uh, by creating huge economic downturns. And then they're offering these hor horrific solutions. And people are, like you say, jumping at the bit because they don't know what else to do. Well, that's the main point right there is that they don't know what else to do because they've been, you know, blindsided by what they're being told are the leaders. And, you know, people like worship Elon Musk because he's this got to be this genius. Right. So and what does he got? Electric cars. Right. So they don't give us like you say there's so many there could be all other alternative vehicles uh, propulsion mechanisms we know about these we've talked about some of them and they just they're only offering us the one they want us to see and they don't tell us that the electric cars require these lithium batteries and the lithium has to come from somewhere do people think about where the lithium comes from do they really if you research you know what is how much energy is required to mine lithium and how and many then, little hands, how many little slave then, hands, yes, kids and stuff, and then refine lithium and then build cars that run on lithium batteries. They've the calculations that I've seen indicate that for you to get an electric car that's driven on a lithium battery system, you'd have to drive a carbon combustible engine car for about 250,000 kilometers before you used up as much energy pollution as it did to take that to create that one car. Right. So, I mean, it's just absurd. And yeah, they're they're forcing us into their alternatives. And the thing is, they're laughing all the way at us, because as long as we don't get together and do like what Langan was talking about, this this sort of blanket consciousness that it, like it's a rebellion consciousness. It's a consciousness that wakes up and and says, well, wait a minute, what dream was that I was living in, uh, you know, and, and sees reality. And if that happens. It's over because there's way many more of us. And, you know, they, they don't stand a chance against us because we're smarter, we're more. And, you know, we're not if we don't want to put up with something, they can't force it on us. There's just no way they can. I, I think you're exactly right. And we're building this energy window. And unfortunately, the, the analogies that we sometimes have to use are very much war like analogies. But we're literally walking through a minefield. 
And you can come out of a minefield stronger and completely unharmed, or it can kill you. Those are kind of the two options. But for that, you need to know where the mines are and how they're operating to move around them. And that's what we're doing here. We're walking through this minefield and trying to help people see the pitfalls and see where they are and not fall for them, not step on them. Because like on, like with a mine, once you step on it, there's no more movement left or right. You are where you are because when you move, you die. And that's, I mean, this is this sounds uh, kind of uh, drastic, but it's really, I think, a proper analogy. And, and in this minefield, Frank, we're going to shift gears here because we need to get to some of the nitty gritty stuff. We need to get to the juice and what's been going on with that, why this is so such an important topic. And let's let's begin with the EU, United States government, Australian government, um, something that you and I have known years and years ago. What is this period, 2019 to 2022? Why, what was this really about? What were the governments doing here? Well, I mean, for me, it's clear that what it was about was to um, assert control and on the one hand, uh, to you know, s- to spread out and to s- solidify and consolidate the control of the uh, the the executive level of people, the upper percent, the upper one percent o- over the population, like the you know the um, the Davos people, you know the the all these people basically have been working toward this for the last century or more. And the other thing it was about to me was just to find if there's still a pulse even out there, if people are, if the resistance is powerful enough that people are raising a stink, that enough people are raising a stink. And I think what they're seeing is that, you know, we we like to talk about the resistance and that there's a revolution of the mind and people are, you know, they're waking up like never before. It's true. But look, even if like, 2 million people wake up, you know, or 3 million or even 5 million people wake up, you know, there's, there's 9 billion people supposedly. Okay. Let's not go into the whole SIM and the the LARPs and all that stuff, but let's just assume there's 9 billion people and 5 million people are waking up. I mean, that's not even, that's not even homeopathic in terms of the effect. So for us to have this change, we, it needs to be, it needs to be a massive change. It needs to be a big noticeable change so that as soon as something happens as soon as something hits the radar there's a big outcry about it it's not just one or two voices in the wilderness and that's what's happened in the eu there's been uh um kind of a uh what would you call it an earthquake you know there's been uh you know a bomb has gone off over here in europe and i asked you last week i said have you is this getting any traction in the states you know and you said no you know and and this is not not the, the way it should have not the way it should have it didn't it didn't shift the narrative although it should have and i just want to say quickly something the governments of these um entities the eu united states uh canada australia and other countries they were working towards a digital id and digital vaccine passport program for years and all of their programs, which are all officially accessible on the government websites, by the way, they were not hidden, showed a, a test, imp- an implementation testing period between 2019 and 2022, which means we coincidentally had a huge worldwide event that would allow for them to test all their technologies and impose them on the people, see how they would react. Now, we have heard the terms excess death and we've heard all the COVID deaths over the last two and a half years. Now, th- now that th- th- that whole narrative is gone and nobody's talking about excess deaths. It's called died suddenly now. And now here yes. we are at the end of 2022 with a massive, massive die off infertility and, and, and uh, this, this, I mean, people that are disabled on massive levels, healthy artists that are dying like flies. It's ridiculous what is happening. And we need to look what the narrative is. Something amazing happened in the EU, what, a month ago at a hearing? Yeah, it started about a month ago. I mean, there was basically, there was this um, this scandal where they, you know, they found out that the head of the EU commission, Ursula von, von der Leyen, bitch. <laughs> that was very um, friendly, very friendly, Frank. You know, uh, she basically got caught finagling and doing backdoor deals directly with the CEO of Pfizer. And 
you know, we're supposed to live in a supposedly in a transparent democracy. Uh, and this woman proceeded to just do a deal for tens of billions of dollar of euros to buy these, um, you know, obviously directly from the source. And not only did she, you know, make that deal without the permission in the democratic democratic system where she tabled it and said, I want to do this, but she did it at a way that was, she did it for a price that was a premium price on top of it. So she negotiated not only to spend our money, tens of billions, but she decided to spend way more than she had to because she she gave it to them at the highest possible price. Okay. And so this is I'm now- sure, I'm sure there was no uh, kickback there. <laughs> No, 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 no. Come on. These people are honest, right? So so what happened is then they had a commission. Okay. This is like you were saying, this this two-year period come and went, right? Came and went. Now we're at the end of that two-year period. And uh, you know, the sudden adult death syndrome is everywhere. People are dropping like flies. Millions of people are having effects, negative, negative effects from from the the juice, right? 